What's up YouTube? Today we're gonna to be talking about why I sold this property right here. The numbers just don't make sense anymore. It's kind of like a cash cow that's already been milked. Watch right to the end to find out all the details. All right, before we get too far into the video here, we wanna let you know why we're selling single family homes and why you might wanna be selling single family homes here as well. We've been milking this one like a cash cow, but how do we actually know that we've been actually milking anything? That's when you have to look at what's been your return on the investment. And as a real estate investor, I don't just use one return. I actually like to look at three different types of returns. So let's explain them really quick, and then we're gonna jump into the video. So the first one is going to be, what is my return on investment? The good old ROI when it comes to being a real estate investor. That's when you gotta look at all your input costs to buy the property, like your down payment, any renovation costs. And this was a furnished rental, so we also had furniture and staging as well. You do the math, you do the vision, and then you figure out what was my annual return on this investment. The second one is gonna be, what's the return on my time? Some assets, like I know earlier on in my real estate investing career, I was doing student rentals. And I gotta tell you, sometimes these guys and gals in college university, I'd buy a five or six bedroom house, fill them up with these students, and they literally don't know how to pick up after themselves or anything like that. So you gotta look at the amount of time that you're spending on that asset as well to get your return. The third one is gonna be return on equity. This is when it's important to be looking at this metric as the value of the home goes up, which really has been happening here huge in the past couple of years. How much of the equity is getting trapped in the property? Like how much of that newfound value is not being able to be refinanced out through your new mortgages? We'd already refinanced this property once and the bank was starting to tell us like, hey, whoa, whoa, guys, you're, you're already doing this and asking, coming to the well too many times. Um, we're gonna start to tap you out here. So at that point, we had to go and say, look, looking at all these different types of returns might be a good idea to sell, but we want to give you the full context here. We're gonna give you a tour of the property. We're gonna break down all the numbers on the property and really give you that deeper understanding of why we sold and why you might be wanting to sell here too. So let's jump right into the tour. Hopefully you'll really enjoy this video. All right, so right now we're inside on the main floor. So really all we did here is we painted and we decorated. Uh, we got a lot of this furniture here actually secondhand. Um, some of it's brand new, but a lot of it is secondhand. I mean, you don't need a brand new picture on the wall. Um, you don't need a brand new leather couch. They actually wear really well. So we just look for high quality items to go and furnish these places with. And uh, even in the kitchen, I think literally, uh, again, this is my first time in here in a couple years. All we did in the kitchen was change the handles. We were gonna paint all the cabinets. We just figured that's gonna be too much time. Um, so we didn't, and we really, again, we were, we were renting to blue collar you know, managers and things of that nature. This was perfectly fine for them, so we just let it ride. But we'll show you where we did a bunch of work, which was down in the basement. All right, welcome to the basement. This is where we spend actually half of our budget when we were spending money on this property here. So one of the reasons why we got this property undervalued and off market, number one, they didn't like to deal with realtors. Um, they got one of our pieces of marketing material in the mail and they had some problems down here. So they actually had a water leak in the basement. So when we bought the property, there was literally the drywall and the studs were cut out up to about hip height here. They were getting water in the basement. Uh, we think it was actually from the downspouts uh, just being disconnected. So all the water was dumping from the roof line right down by the foundation. And that's one of the most common areas that I see people that have water issues in their basements. It's because they're not directing that water away from the house. So this has been going on for so long that unfortunately the water had carved a path through the uh, cement block in the house and we, we needed to repair the foundation. So we just brought in a waterproofing company. They dug a French drain, we put in some big O and it's being directed now into a sump pump in the other room. We did a little bit of black, uh, black dimple board here too. New carpets, new drywall, new trim and drop tile ceiling while we're at it. We're just figured like, hey, you know what? We might as well, uh, I think, I can't even remember the light fixtures down here. They're super ugly. So we did a whole new ceiling, LED lights, new electrical. So we spent almost 10 grand down here, but it was totally worth it. Really gave us that lift on the property down here. Really helped out on refi time. That's how we got the big lift here. That's why we found this place off market. There was problems, right? There was water problems and the owner's daughter also was having some health issues. So they just wanted to sell. They didn't like to deal with realtors. They just wanted to cash out and leave and leave. They left some money on the table for us, but you know, in the condition it was, we probably wouldn't have been able, they probably wouldn't have been able to get that much more on the market for it anyway. So that's where we spent the money here in the basement. All right, and this is the upstairs. Now just walking up here, I can see things are starting to get a little bit more wear and tear. The carpets need to be cleaned. The paint job needs to be fixed up a little bit. Pretty tight floor plan up here. It's basically bedroom, bedroom. We're in the master bedroom right now another bedroom over here. And we didn't go crazy with the furnishings here as you guys will see on the B-roll, but you know, it was like basically Ikea and JISC. These were for worker bee plant workers, right? These are blue collar people. They come home, they just want a place to put their head down at night. So we, uh, we gave them what they needed and they're really happy. We're getting about 500 to $600 per bedroom. And that's why we were getting that 
2000 to $2,400 per month on this one. All right, everybody, hopefully you like these videos that we're posting. We're trying our best to post once or twice a week and we still need you to absolutely smash, that's right, absolutely smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button, drop us a comment. I really enjoy answering all the comments on these videos. I wanna teach you different things throughout the comments as well. Let us know what you'd like to see as well. So let's jump into the video. All right, so as we discussed outside, there's different types of returns, right? And the one trap that we're getting in here was the return on equity. A lot of our equity is getting stuck in this deal. So let's talk about some of the numbers on this so you can actually understand our situation and why we're taking some of the money off the table these days when it comes to our single family rentals. So we bought this property for about 160. And keep in mind, this was from a motivated seller. There was some problems with the property and they weren't paying any real estate fees, okay? So we bought it for about $20,000 to $30,000 under market value because we had to go and fix those problems. So between fixing them and all the furnishings, we spent about $20,000. So right there, we're about $180,000 in. And within a year, we actually reappraised the property around $240,000, $260,000. I'm trying to remember the exact numbers. At that point, we pulled out our down payment, a lot of our renovation and furniture costs. And at that point, we were basically just no money into the property, all right? So we just kept milking it for another couple of years. Our average rents on this property here were between $2,000 and $2,400 per month, which is not too bad for you know the cost that we had in. We were basically hitting the 1% rule on our refinance, which was really, really nice. And then guess what happened? During COVID, things just kept, kept going up and up and up. And you know we're riding this wave here in Sarnia, Ontario. There's a lot of worker bee type, blue collar workers that are coming to town to work on the plants. So that's not gonna last forever. I really do believe we're kind of getting towards the tail end of all these plant upgrades and things that people are coming to town for. So me and my business partner, we just said, look, what should we do here? Um, should we sell the property? We were actually talking around Christmas time and I said, hey, I'm, I wouldn't be opposed to it. It'd be nice if we could sell it for over $400,000, right? And then guess what happened? We hit peak real estate in January, February, and we didn't list quite then, right? It was the winter time. We wanted to wait for the spring. And at that point, the market started turning down a little bit. So we didn't, we didn't list it during March break. We thought, hey, let's list it after March break. And that's when the market was definitely starting to soften. I believe we listed it right after Easter. And after a couple rounds of price reductions, we ended up settling at $401,000. So we're happy. The property went up in value by almost 250% in less than three years. So that's a huge win. We couldn't expect much, much more with that. And we know that we probably wouldn't be able to refinance and get all that money out again, right? My business partner, who's the money partner on this one, is you know, getting a little bit more maxed out with what the banks are willing to lend him. So we just said, hey, we'd be willing to sell as long as we get over $400,000. And that's what we did. So we're both gonna be walking away with a good chunk of money from selling this property, probably 75 to $90,000 each after capital gains tax. So that's how we're looking at this right now. We knew that this high cash flow strategy wasn't gonna be working forever. We know that the market is now correcting down and it's just a good time to kind of get out and take some money off the table. When you look at the average price of a home here in Canada over the past couple of years, it's really crept up into, depending on which province you're looking at, like over $700,000. One stat that I pulled up was actually $740,000 for an average home price all across Canada. Now this is probably a below average home. It's a more of a starter home uh, compared to some really mansion type homes in Toronto, but still there's a lot of places in Canada that aren't as affordable as they used to be compared to let's say the United States where the average price of a home is somewhere between $340,000 and $430,000. Again, depending on what state you're looking at. So we're taking money off the table. A lot of single family home rentals haven't worked for a long time. And the only reason that this one worked was because it was a furnished rental. Uh, we're not gonna be doing Airbnb. We were really just riding this wave of these worker bee you know, contracts coming to town. We saw that drying up as well. So make sure that you're being smart when it comes to real estate investing, that you're always looking at what the market is doing, what the trends are doing in your city and how can you adapt and pivot. We're gonna be putting this money into much bigger projects now and getting a great return on those as well. So make sure that you keep putting out offers. There's gonna be opportunities here throughout the course of 2022. I wanna make sure that you don't miss out. And until next time, friends, be amazing. Keep investing in real estate.